Okay. Uh, hello. This is probably going to be a little bit messy. I'm going to turn myself up a little bit here. Um, probably going to be a little bit messy because this is my first time doing this. Uh, but uh, I thought I would uh, I would make a little tutorial on uh, rigging because it's kind of uh, something that I uh, I figured out how to do uh, that apparently no one else has figured out how to do in kind of a while, uh, or at least they haven't made any tutorials on it. So um, I would like to do that. Uh, so uh, you have your model, right? Uh, we're going to rig up this model of my dog, uh, which you can see here dancing around uh, while I talk. Uh, and the way, the main way to do this, to rig a model, uh, if you don't need to move it around afterwards, is a capture node, right? A capture stop. Um, and what this does is it basically uh, assigns the capture regions to the points they correspond to with, you know, the weights and, and whatever that they, that they use. Um, and it doesn't do anything else. It assigns those things, and you, with this capture frame, can set the frame that it assigns those things. Uh, it doesn't. It literally does zero other things. Um, it just keeps those in memory, right? Uh, and then here you have the deform sop. This is how you actually move stuff around, right? Uh, so this has an error right now, obviously, uh, because it doesn't, it's a very strange error, um, but all it means is you don't have any capture regions yet. Um, I'm going to set this to color by capture region, so you can actually kind of see what's going on. Uh, a capture region is a cylinder uh, with, uh, with, with like half a sphere uh, on either end. Uh, that's what all these different um, parameters uh, control is is the size and shape of that. I guess it's not a cylinder, it's a tube because uh, you can set the the top and bottom to different radii if you want. Um, whatever. But you get it. Uh, so all you have to do, in order to set up uh, a rig is you set your capture frame to something that's within the range of the frames you're looking at and then you go to that frame uh, and then you can you know move move shit around and it'll and it'll capture uh, in different ways so I'm gonna just make this one I don't know the body it's not a big deal. Uh, a lot of the time, I find it a lot easier to put a transform after it because these parameters are way easier to work with than, the, than these ones. Um, but if it, it makes a lot more sense to you to keep uh, everything in one place, uh, then you could definitely do that. This microphone is a pile of shit. Uh, so excuse all of the clipping that keeps happening. Um, as far as I know, that's literally me having my head in the wrong spot. So, whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to use this transform to move it around. Um, and let's just say, like, I don't know. Sure, it, it, it can be messy. I don't care. Uh, and then we'll merge it with... We'll, we'll just do uh, a couple legs. We don't need to do all of them. Uh, I just want to show like how, how you use this. I don't, I don't really need it to be perfect or even good. Uh, it just needs to work, uh, which is good enough. Um, so let's see. Uh, you can change the colors uh, of these, which is very helpful for being able to see what you're doing. Um, 
And you can see that when you have it set to different colors, uh, each point is colored uh, as like with a mix of the of the colors that are weighting it. Um, which is, you know, is pretty intuitive um, as rigging in touch designer goes. Uh, so here I'm going to do one and scale it not like that. Uh, this is just, I'm, I'm really, this is not something that needs to be perfect. Um, I'm just sort of mucking around trying to get something that's like recognizable. Uh, and very like, you know, it's uh, so that it's clear what's happening, right? Like, I don't know, this one is the foot, right? Uh, we can get away with just two. It, it doesn't matter that much. I'll just do two. Fine. So once you have everything the way that you like, you move this capture frame outside uh, of of where you're animating in. Uh, the default is obviously zero, but you can set it, you know, whatever fanciful number you want. Uh, and then now those groups are captured and they're kept in memory as long as the node that you have connected directly to the capture node is intact. It doesn't actually even matter if it's uh, the correct, like if it's connected, right? Because all this does all this does is it tells it tells this uh, which points are weighted in which groups and which node has the groups in it. So I could connect this uh, to the capture node if I only want to move this one around, um, and that would work fine. You, you can see there's no errors, and this is still connected to the deform. Um, and now what I can do, the way that you actually move these groups around, is you just transform them before the capture node, which is part of what makes this so unintuitive, right? Like, you know, I, it, this is not, you know, a useful transformation, but you can see what's happening here, right? You, you can see that the, uh, the, the group of points that's been, that's been captured by this capture group is being moved because I'm moving it before that capture group. Uh, and I believe actually, I'm going to check this right now, uh, honestly, because I'm not sure, but I think, um, that this will also move. Yeah. 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 So, um, you don't have to have the transforms connected to the capture node in order to capture or in order to, to move them around. Uh, it's literally only the node that the deform is connected to. Uh, so this capture node will... Oh, it doesn't do that anymore. Okay. Yesterday, it was erroring out whenever I disconnected stuff. But apparently, uh, as long as you have the deform node, the deform SOP, uh, set up with the correct uh, SOP with all the capture regions in it, uh, you're fine to just get disconnect that because all that matters is this this node, which it's a shame you can't just assign it because that seems like it would be pretty convenient. Um, but as it is, if this node goes away, uh, your rig is gone uh, and you have to recapture it. So um, I hope this was a, a nice like useful mini explainer. It's not, it's kind of all over the place uh, and you can kind of tell what's happening. Not really, but like, I don't know. It is not intuitive that you have to, that you have to transform these before, um, before the capture node. That one doesn't make sense, but the deform node uh, it does make sense because, you know, 
that's the thing that's deforming it, according to the capture regions. It's just that the capture is such a completely separate thing from the rest of this setup that it feels like you're doing things out of order, right? Um, so this is just sort of... Uh, a, you know, a mini explainer, probably not great quality, but I will probably do more of them and they will be better. Uh, but for now, uh, that is the very simple thing uh, that I eventually figured out after a lot of trial and error uh, that I would have liked to know right away. So if you are new to this and you are trying to rig and touch designer, which for the record, don't do if you know how to do it anywhere else. Um, that's how you do it. You make these capture regions, you capture them, and then once you've captured them, it doesn't it doesn't matter if they're still connected to the capture, but the capture does have to be connected uh, because it has that stuff saved in it. Um, and you can obviously, you know. You can save a file and, and keep the file around to use for a particular model, um, but then you have to have those regions in a specific node, right? Because um, if, I, if I rename this to uh, renamed, then this stops working, right? Because it can't find that node anymore. And that node, uh, like that SOP, is contained within the capture. Like the name of that SOP is in the capture data. When you save the file with the capture data in it, it will have the name of that SOP in it. So you can't just drop it onto a capture node and have it work. You have to have the correct node with all your capture groups in it. It's there are so, so, so many ways that this could be different and better. And you'll notice I'm using 2022 because it just, it hasn't changed since like Houdini 8 or something. It's just, it just is this way and they haven't improved it at all and they really should. But at the moment, if you want a rig and touch designer, uh, God help you. Um, this is how you get started. Uh, I've been rambling for a while. Uh, you're probably not watching at this point uh, because I kind of gave all the information that you need. But um, thanks for watching whatever you did. Uh, and goodbye. And uh, uh, happy, happy touch designing. You actually didn't notice that I'm using 2022 because it's in the corner of the screen you, you can't see. I'm using Touch Designer 2022 right now. 2022.29530. Uh, I doubt it's changed since then, though. So, um, yeah. Uh, bye. Hope, hope this helped. Um, yeah, see ya.